Hello and welcome to another episode of Smoking the One Arm Bandit. In the last episode, we did a lot of work to get the engine running and we got it fired up on my uh, basic bitch tune. Now what we're doing is we're just doing the last few bits and pieces to get the car off to the tuner. It's going to the tuner tomorrow, so uh, just little things. We're wiring in up the uh, alternator at the moment, so we've now got 14 volts. We've got a battery. We've run battery cables through the car to the isolator switch, which is just in there. Battery's actually looking pretty neat. We still need to tidy up the power wire just with the uh, the covering and the conduit, but I'm pretty happy with it. It's looking pretty good in there. Also, I've extended the wiring that goes to the power windows, and we've got that bracket painted it in the car, sitting on top of the handbrake there. Good old Deutsch connector, my favorite new thing. And Dad has reinforced this handbrake lever so it doesn't break like it did on the 180. Still have to do the lever at the top, or a paddle for me to press on, but we'll do that a little later on. So yeah, things are coming together. Couple more bits and pieces to do this morning, and then uh, chuck it on the trailer, load it off, and send it to Joztech for uh, its tune. exciting that was the first drive that I had in the car I'm pretty amped it's uh, it's been a long time coming even though I just drove it up the driveway a couple of times did have a couple of concerns when we had it on the hoist and had it in gear it was making some horrible noises from the gearbox but uh, we drove it up and down the driveway there was no noises I think that's just because there was no load on the tires and the uh, engine idles all over the place so it was just clunking back and forth on the gearbox and the diff so that seems to have solved, it, solved itself, which is rather nice because I didn't want to have to pull the gearbox or diff out. Now I'm going to put it on the uh, trailer, load it up, and uh, tomorrow I'll take it off to Joztech. Well, big thanks for TJE Media for uh, shooting that footage of the car on the dyno and supplying it to me for the video. So, uh, shout out to those guys. Car's back, made 295 kilowatts at 5,500 RPM and made uh, 530 newton meters of torque. So, she's, uh, she's going pretty good. I think the injectors are running out of go just at the top end. So, we're not revving her too high at the moment. Maybe at some point I'll uh, chuck some different injectors in there and uh, maybe raise the RPM rev limiter, but for the moment it's at six and a half thousand. We'll see how that goes, see if we want more RPM and wheel speed. But overall, really happy, was expecting a call from the tuner at some point to say, oh, you need this or this isn't working or something along those lines. And uh, that call never came, just uh, called me to let me know that it was done. So really happy. Now what we've got to do though, is get the car ready to actually drive. I've booked a, a drift prac at Malala, not this weekend, but next weekend. So to do that, I need to get the car actually drivable because there was a lot of stuff that we didn't really cover off or finish off before it went to the tuner. Things like this. This is a power steering line from the Astra pump. So uh, we've got that made up at NZ. Now we've got to fit it up to the car. Also got oil coolers and that sort of stuff to fit up. So uh, time to get stuck into that. Get this thing ready for the track. Oh. 
We're now to the stage of the build that we're working on the, uh, the fine details, we're working on alignment settings and suspension settings. One of the things Dad realised with the front end setup of the car, there's very little droop. So this is about 30 mil of droop at the front end, which isn't nearly enough for what we want. You can also see the gap here. It's, uh, it doesn't fall away from the guard very much when it's um, in the air. Obviously, droop is a measurement between static ride height and uh, the amount that the wheel drops when you lift the car up. And there's not a lot there. I think there's about 30 mil. Part of the problem is this strut isn't long enough. So the problem with that is the strut not being long enough, I can't lift the car and then create droop that way because the strut isn't actually long enough to allow for that height. So uh, we're stuck at the moment because I also wanted to raise the actual static height of the car and I can't do that because it would get rid of that 30 mil of droop. So. Dad's come up with a solution on the lathe, so we'll go take a look at what he's done. But firstly, we'll just take a look at the rear because this is more the amount of droop that we'd want. So I'm pretty happy with the droop that's on the rear. It's, uh, as you can see, it falls away from the guard quite a bit. So that's going to be a lot better for uh, our setup when we go to make sure that we put grip into the car and that sort of thing. So we'll go take a look at what Dad's done to uh, fix up the front end. Yeah, Tate talked to you about the issue we've got with the, the lack of droop in the car. While this strut has an adjustability of height, it's already gone as far as we can with trying to, to drop it out of the car and it's still not far enough. So the only way we can do it is actually lower the whole strut. So normally this comes with this nut on here holding this on, the, on there and then the SLR goes on it and that goes under the strut tower. So what we've really got to do is we're going to have to just space this out. So this will actually drop the whole assembly 50 mil, which will give us 50 mil more droop. So what I've done is I've made up this spacer that will go like that, obviously one for either side. Um, and I've made the two extra holes in here. So they'll go onto there and that'll marry these two together. And then we've still got all the exactly the same adjustment bolts for the SLR setup as what the original SLR did. So it'll just make it the strut 50 mil lower in the car, which will do the trick. Well, naturally, because of the coilovers we've got on it, the end links for the sway bar are t way too long, so we're uh, going to have to get out the grinder and welder and fix those up to the right length. <laughs> It'll do for the minute anyway. We're now up to the stage that we're making up an alignment bar so that we can align the car pretty much wherever we need to, trackside or in the shed here, without having to take it out to a tyre shop. Gonna run a bar across the front like this and then string line in between to a similar bar on the rear of the car. And it'll make a difference because of the ring. Yeah, that's just under 50, I see that. Yep. That's, that's 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. That's So we got the weights done on the car. It's 1354 total weight, which isn't too bad. That's with like a third or a quarter of a tank. And uh, pretty much the only thing missing is a passenger seat. So we're pretty happy with that. It's in a state that we could drive it out to the track pretty much now if we wanted to. So uh, all fluids and oils and stuff like that in there. It's 52% uh, weight distribution to the front. So that's uh, pretty close to 50-50. I'm pretty happy with that, so yeah. Overall, uh, the scales are really good to have. We've got pretty even weight distribution and uh, should make for a good time on the track. Well, it's a new day. We're uh, back up the hill today. Tomorrow is the day that we're going to the track. So uh, last day to get all the little jobs knocked off. Dad's putting on the uh, cut and shut uh, sway bar links that we had to cut down on size last night and weld back together. We got all the alignment stuff done yesterday, which is nice. We don't have to worry about that today. I'm going to be doing a quick oil change after it uh, went and got tuned. We need to chuck a new oil and oil filter in it. And then we've got a whole heap of other little jobs to get done. Think, things like fire extinguishers, harnesses, uh, wiring up hazard lights and all that sort of stuff to get on track. So a uh, busy day ahead, but I think we should make it uh, hopefully without having to go too deep into uh, tonight. How you going, mate? One of the things we didn't get a chance to do before we sent the car off to the dyno was put the oil cooler set up on it. So Dad's made up this bracket here for this big old oil cooler in the front of the car. 
it should work pretty well. It's probably a little bit oversized, but I'd rather have it a bit oversized than a bit undersized. Should be plenty of airflow still for the radiator. It's not like it's ducted and stealing too much airflow away from the radiator, so that's all pretty good. The other thing is I got an oil filter block that has a thermostat in it. That means that uh, it, oil isn't gonna go through the oil cooler until it's at a set temperature. It's gonna mean that the oil has to be warm. So if I have to rush out on track, the oil should warm up really quickly rather than taking a lot longer because it has to go through a cooler. So that should work pretty well. It's all bolted on the car. And as far as we can see, there's no leaks. Well, it's a bit hard to believe, but we're actually nearing the very end of the list to get the car out on track. We fitted up these harnesses, so they're uh, all good to go. I can belt myself in. We've got a fire extinguisher on the far side there, just in case. Uh, done a couple little wiring bits and pieces. I put these two Deutsch connectors on either side so that we can remove the front nice and easy without having to take out all the individual plugs for the uh, front light. So that should make uh, taking the front of the car off easy if we need to. We've got the front bumper back on. So uh, yeah, pretty close to the end. The last thing to do is make some kind of shifter for this so that I can actually change gears. And there's uh, the prototype. <laughs> Probably won't be the final uh, version. Well, definitely won't be the final version, but hopefully it'll be enough for me to be able to shift gears tomorrow without too much hassle. Well, the car's all clean now. It's ready to go on the trailer, which is nice. I think that's going to conclude this episode because I really want to do a full episode on the first day of driving the car. So uh, see you on the next episode of Smokey and the One-Armed Bandit, where we see if the uh, old Smokey there lives up to its name.